All right, you guys, so I'm doing a screencast uh, between classes, so it might get a little loud as, as people move through the hallways and such, uh, but I think you can hear me clearly enough. We're going to be talking about microevolutionary forces here. Now, don't forget that what I talked about previously with macroevolution, those are large pieces of evidence, or not necessarily large, but pieces of evidence that support the concept that the... Um, the genes in a population change over time, and it's reflected in the fact that their morphology or their behaviors change over time. So what we want to do, though, is figure out what are the things that are causing these changes in the first place? What are these forces that lead to change that is reflected in, those, in that, in that macro-revolutionary evidence? Now, the first concept you need to understand before we go any further is this concept of the gene pool. And the gene pool is the contribution of all the different alleles that exist in a population for that particular trait. But it includes all the traits. So this gene pool is not a physical thing. Keep in mind, it's not like something you dive into. It's the collection or pool of genes that an individual has the potential to get in a population. Now, that doesn't mean that you have access to every single one of the genes that exist out there. But theoretically, the population has all those genes so that theoretically any individual could get one of those genes or one set of those particular genes. Okay, so you can see here is sort of a schematic or a diagram to help you understand this concept of the gene pool. So notice that even though they're showing it as a pool, which is a little bit naughty because then you guys do think it's something that they go and drink from, um, what we really are showing here is that we have these capital B's and these lowercase b's and that any of these organisms has access to either getting the lowercase b allele or the uppercase b allele or and some combination thereof. Okay, But again, it's not just um, a single pair of alleles here. We're talking about all the alleles that exist in a population for that given species. The first of the four microevolutionary uh, what is it? Forces, Jesus, that's me not having a brain, is mutation. So mutation is the ultimate source of all alleles. When you think about this, a population is sitting in generation one, and it does not have a particular allele. We're going to say it has a frequency of zero. And then suddenly, in the next generation, there's a mutation somewhere along the line, maybe in the process of making the gametes, where in the next generation, you have one individual with a new allele that resulted from that mutation. So it goes from having a frequency of zero to having a frequency of one in that whole population of organisms. And if it happens to be something that's beneficial, you can imagine that that's quickly going to spread throughout the population. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the spread. We're talking about the formation, the source of the allele in the first place is caused by mutation. So if evolution is the change in the genetic makeup of a population over time, mutation is going to allow for that change to occur. It's going to bring in a brand new allele. We did natural selection today in class. We collected that data. And you all intuitively have a sense of this concept of natural selection, which is, again, very much based on the concept of fitness. So if you have a gene that offers you a higher level of fitness, then that's going to be something that spreads throughout the population over time. And that happens through the process of natural selection because the good things increase the fitness of the organism and therefore increase the rate of reproduction for that organism that contains that heritable trait. And if it's a bad trait, if it's something that's not beneficial, it lowers the fitness, and that means that you lower the reproductive success of that individual. So again, if we're looking at evolution as being the change in the genetic makeup of the organ of the population over time, then we have natural selection is sort of the, the, the hand that goes in there and either increases or decreases the frequency of the allele that was created by mutation. Okay, so there I have it defined as a force that changes the frequency of alleles, by the way, based on differential fitness. I'll go ahead and add alleles. And again, this is alleles in the gene pool for that particular population. Okay, and then we have the third concept, the third force. It's called gene flow. And what I want you to imagine is that you have two populations that are separate from one another. And let's just imagine that you have sort of a mountain 
that separates these two populations. So they have no access to each other. They can't, one population can't move to the other and share genes. So if you have in this population here, I'm just going to call this population A, and I'll call this one over here population B. Let's imagine you have a particular gene pool, and this would be the gene pool for A, and you have a gene pool for B. Now, if we have mutation and natural selection affecting the gene pool, then you're going to have a different set of genes that develop over here in group A. So you have the gene pool A, which is going to be distinctly different from the gene pool B, including, by the way, that you're going to have mutations that develop so that you'll have a set of genes that are inside gene pool A that don't even exist in gene pool B. You'll also, because of natural selection, have potentially a different frequency of genes here because perhaps there's the environment is slightly different on the sort of west side of the mountain here than it is here on the east side of the mountain where a different set of characteristics might benefit organisms. So you'll have separate gene pools with different frequencies of alleles and different alleles potentially altogether. What gene flow is, is the movement of alleles from one population to another when prior to that the populations were separate from one another. So let's say there was some event, some catastrophic event, but in some ways it benefited this. Maybe there was a major hurricane, and what this hurricane did is it took some of the genes in the form of individuals from population A over to population B. That's called gene flow. So it didn't develop, B didn't develop the, um, the new allele through mutation. It developed the new allele because it was moved to its population from another population. And it may have increased the frequency of a particular set of alleles across the population as a result of not natural selection, but because suddenly a whole influx of individuals from, from A cruised over to population B, and they may have all had, uh, let's say, red beaks, and up to that point, gene B had very infrequent red beaks in the population. Okay, so gene flow is um, certainly, it started with mutation and natural selection, but ultimately, if you're looking at it from one perspective, from the perspective of, say, this population over here, the change in the frequency of the allele did not come about through natural selection and mutations in B. It came about through gene flow when we're looking at population B. All right, now the last one we're looking at is the hardest one to understand, and it's called genetic drift. Now, you could take an entire course on this concept of genetic drift. It becomes very mathematical, um, but I'm not going to talk about it in terms of mathematics because that would be crazy. So I want you to imagine you have a whole bunch of beetles, and these beetles have different colors. There are red beetles and there are green beetles in this population. Now, I'm drawing it as an absurdly small population, but you'll see that that really helps with genetic drift. And let's say that uh, my son is running to the bus to go, catch the, the um, school bus to go to school. And he's not paying attention to where he's going, and he steps directly on top of this pile of beetles, squishes a bunch of them. Now, for the most part, if the red and the greens are mixed together fairly evenly, he's going to kill an equal number of red and greens. So we would imagine that this would get crushed right? These dudes right here would get crushed underneath his feet and leaving, let's just say something like this. So the only, whoops, go away. The only ones that would survive are going to be this red and green one, which will go off and propagate, etc. That's not genetic drift. That's a random situation that has just happened. And it happens to be that Cal went and stomped on him. Now, it's not as if Cal said to himself, I'm going to go and squish only the red beetles because they're easy for me to see. All right, so it's not a natural selection event. It's a random selection that happened here because of some chance event. Now, in nature, that's going to be something like a, torna a tornado whips through or a, an earthquake happens and a big rock falls on a whole bunch of things or any number of things could happen that are random events that are catastrophic that could wipe out significant chunks of the population, and it's not selective based on the characteristics of that organism. It just happens to be that those organisms were there where the 
tornado touched down and wiped out that part of the population. Okay, so that's an important thing for you to understand, that the randomness of what's going on here. Now let's imagine instead of these beetles being perfectly mixed here, evenly distributed underneath Cal's foot, instead we have something like this. Again, it's a probabil probability thing. For some weird reason, at that moment when Cal was running through, all the red ones, or most of the red ones, and most of the green ones were not distributed in a way that was even. So then when Cal came through and wiped out these dudes, crushed them, he killed this, 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 this. These are all dead. These are the ones that were directly under his foot, and they all got crushed. Now, it happens to be that it was a small enough population that this had a huge impact on the frequency of alleles in the gene pool because the only ones that survived now were these ones. And you can see that 75% of them have the allele for being red, whereas only 25% have the allele for being green because of this random event that just occurred. Now, because this is a small population, when these things breed, the next generation, you're going to have a much higher rate of having the reds to the greens, right? So it may not be 75-25, but certainly you're going to imagine that there's going to be a bias that is going to be, so there's a higher frequency of having the red allele versus the green allele. And if it just so happens that the same event might happen again, and if we're talking about millions of years, you could imagine where there's going to be an event where another kid's foot comes down and crushes a whole bunch of green ones relative to red ones. So let's say that in this next generation, I wipe out this group right here. These ones all get crushed. Then now I've just gone from 75% to a much higher percentage of red. So what this means is that eventually you might lead to what's called fixation, which is that only one allele is going to exist in the population. The other one disappears. And that has nothing to do with natural selection. It had to do with a random event. So that's the key to genetic drift, is that randomness is causing a change in the allele frequency. And it could be that you have one very rare allele that's hanging out in one individual, and that individual happens to get killed and when a tree falls on it, and boom, you go from having a frequency of one to having a frequency of zero, had nothing to do with natural selection, had nothing to do with gene flow, had nothing to do with mutation, had nothing to do with anything but this concept of genetic drift changing the allele frequency in that population. Okay, enjoy.